You can't control other people, but you can control how you respond to them. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's episode of 7 Good Minutes, we get a few great tips on how to deal with difficult people. Enjoy. I want you to think of a time when maybe you were interacting with somebody who you felt was difficult. As you're sitting there and you're talking to them, maybe getting into an argument, maybe the tensions are starting to rise, you can feel your palms starting to sweat, you can feel your breath starting to get shorter, you can feel yourself getting angry. And at some point in time in that conversation, you decide, I've had enough of this, it's time for me to walk away. You walk out, you get about five steps this way and it hits you and you're like, oh, I should have said this, I would have totally got them. That is a product of our brains. When we meet somebody, maybe for the first time, and we shake their hands, we say, hello, how are you? My name's Jay, nice to meet you. And something in the back of your mind is already hitting you and going, I'm not going to like this person. (laughs) Well, if you've experienced that, trust me, you're not alone. Our brain is designed for survival. What Daniel Goleman calls the low road is something where we look at, others call it the limbic system, our fear regulation, our fight or flight response. When we deal with difficult people, ultimately what we're doing is trying to get past that response. It's a natural response that we have. In fact, it's an important response. It is the response that stress comes into the body. So we see things like adrenaline, norepinephrine, cortisol flood the system when we're engaged with those difficult people. We're in a heightened state of anxiety during that, and our other systems start to shut down. We don't think rationally. Our metabolism slows. We can even get acne from having too much stress hormones put into the body. Is that a way that we want to live our lives? Conflict in the workplace between difficult people or not difficult people has serious impacts. And ultimately what it does is it causes turnover, absenteeism, It can even cause projects to fail. So, what can we do about that? We can't change other people's behavior. I can't make somebody behave in the way that I want them to. So I guess maybe we need to look at a different framework of operating from internal. When we look at people, one of the ways that we can start changing this conversation with ourselves is to look at how we label them. So we label somebody difficult or a pain in the you-know-what. We also have these archetypes that we tend to create. So for example, one of the people, you might encounter them in the office place, you walk in to have a conversation with them, and they won't lift their head up. They're just sitting there, they're texting, they're playing on their computer, and they're not paying any attention to you. That's the archetype of the not listener. We have other archetypes, such as the one-upper. If you've ever been at a party and you tell a story, And then what happens? Somebody has to tell a better story. Or you go and get a new dress and somebody has to get a better dress. Or something of that nature. Anything that's always the one-up archetype. How about the gossiper? The person that walks around and they gossip all about different people in the office place. It almost just to stir up trouble. What about the curmudgeon? The person that's been there and done that and remembers the glory days of everything that's right or wrong with your organization. Now, part of my framework is behavior, and I can guarantee you that at some point in time when I was talking about those archetypes, you put a name and a face with each one of those individuals. Yeah, I see the nods. When we look at that and we understand that those are the different behaviors that really impact us individually, we know that we need to change. The simple message is this. Why should we have to change ourselves because of somebody else's behavior? Because it's your heart attack. Those stress hormones are killers. It's your heart attack. 
So if we can't change other be people's behaviors, the only thing that we can change is our own behaviors. Let's look at a unique approach through behavioral intelligence. Behavioral intelligence really has four quadrants. To be able to explain existing behaviors, predict future behaviors, influence other people's behaviors, and control our own behaviors. And we'll talk about that in the context of difficult people. So one of the things that we want to look at is how do we explain behaviors? When we see somebody do something that we really just don't like and we label them, maybe they're stubborn. Well, at the same time, couldn't we see our friend doing that and say, well, they're just headstrong. We see somebody do something and we feel like it's aggressive. But on the other side of things, we look at our friend that does the exact same behavior and we say, wow. Wow. They're dedicated, motivated, passionate even. So some of these labels start to infiltrate the way that we understand the world. It's a bias that we have. So we want to look a little bit deeper and ask the question of why. Why did somebody behave that way? Is it something inherent? Is it an intrinsic desire that is pushing them to behave that way? Now this is a tough question because we're in the heat of the moment. One of the things that we get really frustrated with is ourselves in that moment. We don't take the time to actually ask. We just label and continue. But again, it's your heart attack. It's your organization that's suffering. So we have to look at this in a different way. Asking questions is one of the best ways to explain behavior. Please keep in mind, this is about half of the entire presentation. If you're up for a treat, you should definitely listen to the whole thing. You can do so by clicking the link labeled View the Full Video on YouTube in the show notes. So that does it for this episode of 7 Good Minutes. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.